our baby's tender nervous systems are evolved to downregulate with us. This is called co-regulation. It means if we're stressed in our bodies, our babies might not be able to pee or poop. It sounds crazy, but our baby's anus and urethra need their bodies to feel safe and calm in order to release in a gentle way. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Nicole Cheever, and this is the Go Diaper Free Podcast. This is episode 252, My Baby Won't Poop When I'm Angry or Upset, The Role of Co-Regulation and Elimination Communication. This is another post brought to us by one of our other certified coaches, Lisa Perus. We know her as D. She is from Montreal, Quebec. She's a postpartum doula, mom of two, and she has a whole bunch of other hats that she wears that you can read about in her bio that we'll link on today's episode. If you're listening on your favorite podcast player, please make sure you subscribe so you can find out when new episodes air. And if you're watching on YouTube, hello, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. When you're done listening, you can go to godiaperfree.com slash 252. You can find the transcript there and links to anything that Dee is going to mention in today's post. So without further ado, here is the role of co-regulation and elimination communication. We are a generation of parents who tend towards gentle parenting, aka authoritative parenting, not to be confused with authoritarian parenting with which many of us were raised. For many of us, adopting this parenting framework also involves flipping the narrative from the way we ourselves were raised. If you've looked into gentle parenting resources, you're likely to have come across the term cycle breaking. You may even identify as a cycle breaker yourself. I sure do. The concept of breaking the cycle refers to interrupting generational trauma. In my own case, this is a trauma handed down to me from my parents that was handed down to them from their parents, which was likely handed down to them from previous generations. We in the age of the internet are lucky enough to have access to resources to change that narrative, to break the cycle. If you're like me, then you were likely raised to, quote, behave, to be good. And when you weren't doing these things, you were punished. This was pretty standard for us Gen Xers. The net result? We were conditioned with fear to act in a way that pleased our caregivers. Anyone else out there still a people pleaser? As a young adult, I had come to terms with the fact that I had no coping skills for dysregulation. I had to develop self-regulation tools that I never learned from my parents. It's not their fault. They never learned them either. For me, this has meant meditation, regulatory movement practices, honoring my nervous system's maximal load, and lots and lots of therapy. Why do I bring this up and what does it have to do with elimination communication or EC? Well, quite simply, it has everything to do with EC. Our nervous system dictates when we can eliminate safely. Even as adults, our nervous systems manage our digestive system. I know many adults who get diarrhea when they're nervous. I myself get fully constipated. This is an evolutionary function designed to allow us to fight or flight without pooping ourselves. We either release pee or poop quickly or hold it so we can flee danger. Case in point, When I was on maternity leave with my second baby, I binge-watched all of The Handmaid's Tale. If you've watched it, you know it can be a frightening show. I know that for some of the more intense episodes, my entire body would feel fear. This came into our EC practice because I would mostly binge the show while contact napping my baby. I'd nurse him to sleep, and once he passed out, I'd pop on an episode and get engrossed in the world of Gilead. I started to notice that when my own body was in a heightened state and that my baby would wake from his nap and need the potty, He would have an entirely different demeanor than if I was watching a light comedy. And he wouldn't pee or poop. Why? And then I noticed that this coincided with tension in my body and decided to deliberately self-regulate while holding my babe over the potty. Breathe in myself. Breathe out, June Osborne. Relax my shoulders. Unclench my jaw. Take another deep breath. All of a sudden, pee. Giggles. What just happened? Oh, I regulated my own nervous system and it made my baby chill out and release his bladder. Huh. Our baby's tender nervous systems are evolved to downregulate with us. This is called co-regulation. That means if we're stressed in our bodies, our babies might not be able to pee or poop. It sounds crazy, but our baby's anus and urethra needs their bodies to feel safe and calm in order to release in a gentle way. And that means we need to be genuinely chill about it. Many parents I've worked with for potty training their older children will tell me some variation of the following with regard to a resistant child who refuses to sit on the toilet. 
I stayed calm, but he still won't relax enough to go. After some prodding and discussion, it becomes clear that this parent wasn't truly regulated. They were pretending to be calm. When they told me they stayed calm, what they meant was keeping their temper in check and refusing to yell at their child, even though they were mad on the inside. Yes, we absolutely want this, but also the nervous system doesn't lie, baby. If you're performing calm, but you are secretly dysregulated, your child will pick up on it. We need to find you a way to regulate yourself, sweet parent. So next time you're trying to potty your child when you're not in a calm mood, notice how it might affect them. Then drop your shoulders, take a deep belly breath, release attachment to results, and see if that changes anything. You might be surprised. Thanks so much again, Dee, for your contributions. They've been so wonderful, and I'm so glad to share them here on the podcast. For everyone listening, don't forget to head over to godiperfree.com slash 252 and share your experience with us. Have you noticed how your body and your state of regulation has affected your baby's ability to use the potty? If you have questions about this, you can ask them there on the blog as well. And of course, we'll be sure to link Dee's website so you can check out more of her work there, both in blog writing and the other hats she wears, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. Thanks again, everyone, for joining me today. This is the Go Diaper Free podcast. I'm Nicole Cheever, and we will see you next week. Mm -hmm.